Hey guys, so this is my first photography shoot of the road trip. Um, I did photograph a couple other places along the way, but this is my first kind of scouted, planned uh, photography shoot. I'm going to be doing sunset and, um, and some Milky Way photography in this video. Uh, right now we're scouting locations. Um, we've been scouting for quite a while and then we went back to the hotel. So now we're going back out to look for, uh, for possible compositions. So we've found our location here. Um, we've got some really lovely mountains in the background, and then um, there are a lot of really lush uh, um, kind of yellow wildflowers in the foreground. So I'm going to try to use those um, as a foreground element with that kind of triangular mountain in the background. Um, it's not quite sunset yet, but now I know where my photo is going to be for uh, the sunset. Um, I, I can't really get too close to some of the grasses because there are rattlesnakes, but yeah, right now we're just going to think of something to do in between sunset and then uh, come back here and hope we have some, some nice dramatic lighting for these uh, flowers or um, maybe possibly even some, uh, some nice lighting in the clouds. So these are the type of flowers that I'm probably going to be using in my foreground. Um, it's not bad that I'm shooting somewhat towards the sun since it might even backlight uh, some of these flowers. Uh, I also don't have to worry about my shadow getting in the photo. All right, so we're on location. I've got everything set up for this composition right here. I'm using a polarizer. Uh, I'm not going to use a graduated filter um, just because a lot of the shadows from my image are actually uh, on the mountains. Um, I'm at about like 40 millimeters, uh, like f11 or 13, and uh, I'm, I'm fairly certain that I have the mountains in the background uh, in focus. Uh, of course, when I'm looking through the viewfinder, because the aperture is wide open, it looks blurry, and then I use the little preview thing to see how in focus it is. It looks pretty good, so I hope I'm right. I'm going to take these last couple photos because the sun's about to drop down. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, that's why I don't think I need an ND filter. Um, and I'm not really going for a long exposure either. So a polarizer works good enough to give a little bit more color to the sky. So this isn't really that far into sunset, but the type of photo I'm going for um, kind of requires the sun to be up a bit more so that I can get a nice blue sky, get some light on the peaks over there, and so that I can get the uh, the backlit flowers and it looks like the sun might go behind a hill up here I'm not sure because the the sun does set kind of diagonally so we'll see but it looks like I have like maybe about 10 more minutes and then my foreground is gonna go dark and then what I'm looking for is some nice soft reflected light I don't know if I'll get reflective light because there's not much clouds up there but I hope that I can get some nice kind of pinkish glow from the horizon to get a kind of uh, less dramatic and just more soft feel to the photo. So for everybody who's new to my channel, which is probably pretty much everybody watching this right now, almost everybody, uh, I'm going on a month-long photography road trip, and I'm starting in Badlands, which is the location I'm at now. And uh, I'm going to be doing photography in other places like Grand Teton, uh, Yosemite, Zion. So it's kind of a loop I'm doing, and I'm ending in Colorado. So if you guys enjoy this photography video, stay tuned, because there will definitely be more. I'm going to be doing a lot of photography on this trip.
Okay, so the uh, main lighting is kind of gone now, but I'm going for another type of shot where I wait for the sun to drop below the clouds and light them up pink. That's one of my favorite types of lighting when you get just like this partially cloudy sky, a nice kind of soft lighting on the foreground, and then some really beautiful pink and orangish tones in the sky. So we'll see if those clouds stick around long enough for the sun to light them up. All right, so now I'm kind of holding this giant awkward selfie stick, really just my camera on a tripod. Um, the lighting's gone. I didn't get a, a nice little uh, soft pink lighting on the clouds, but this is kind of neat over here. There's a nice kind of soft purplish glow on the horizon in this direction. So yeah, our next stop is uh, gonna be one of two viewpoints, and we're gonna photograph Milky Way. And this is gonna be my first uh, Milky Way photography shoot. Hey guys, so I didn't actually film um, when I was doing my Milky Way photography shoot. That's because it was my first Milky Way photography shoot, and I was kind of running around and experimenting. So I'll show you my two favorite photos I got from it. This is the um, this is the first one. I was kind of playing around outside of the door trail, which is has a lot of really great um, rock formations. So I managed to get this photo and uh, enhance it, and I did do uh, a little bit of noise reduction as well. Okay, let's find the next one right here. So this one was a panoramic. It's not the best stitch because I kind of did it really quickly. But this was when the moon started to go down more and we started to get a much more uh, vibrant Milky Way. But if you've never shot Milky Way photos before, basically you put your aperture to wide open, uh, focus your lens to infinity, which luckily uh, the infinity mark on my lens, on my 21mm Zeiss lens, is infinity. And I checked that as well. Um, and then what you want to do is put your ISO to something like 2000 or 3000 as the starting point and your photos should be around 15 seconds so the the stars don't start to streak when they move you can see there's a tiny bit of movement right here but yeah that's just the basic settings there's a lot of detailed videos on it so uh, i hope you enjoyed this video the sunset photography and the night photography so uh, i'll see you guys in the next video